In today's episode, the plot starts with Isagi wondering if they can come up with a plan that lets everyone shine. Thinking about it, Khan comes up with a plan that would require their positions to rotate clockwise each few minutes, so everyone gets to be a striker. Isagi continues to worry about his way of playing and that he will never find his own secret weapon. Kinigami approaches us and praises him for the pass in the previous game. Isagi asks Kinigami why he wants to play football, where Kinigami answers that he aspires to be a football superhero. He says that as a child, he loved attackers who scored to win rather than superheroes, robots, or pirate rulers. These were real-life superheroes who inspired him and gave him strength in life. Isagi applauds Kinigami's courage. Kinigami then decides to have steak for dinner. Asagi looks at Kinigami's dinner and wonders how is that possible. Later, Kinigami shows Asagi that everyone can exchange goals scored during the match with points, which then can buy food and other luxury items. Kinigami tells Asagi that he owns half the goal scored and splits the stake in half. He then wonders why Asagi took a different approach in passing the ball. Asagi then explains that he passed it subconsciously and knew Kinigami would score a goal. The fourth match in Building 5 will be between Team Y and Team Z. Like Team Z, Team Y had lost their opening game, and Khan advises them to be cautious around their number 9, Hibikyukawa. Khan explains his plan of attack, saying that depending on who is currently the striker, the other players will try to support him and use his style and weapon. Okoito Lemon explains that he will be the goalkeeper for the entire game because it is too risky to alternate between them so frequently. Additionally, Chijiri feels at ease playing the entire game on defense. Reichi mocks Chijiri believing that Chijiri isn't talented, however agrees with the overall plan. They also decide to alternate between ranks, starting at the highest rank. Bakiryus is dribbling as a solo strategy. While the other two are facing him, two players pass him. When Asagi notices this, he acknowledges that they have been practicing a move in which the third player would have stolen the ball. Isagi acknowledges that their opponent's strategy is extremely aggressive and rallies on their weapons even as they play defense and try to neutralize them. Isagi believes that one will eventually succeed because they have access to so many more techniques. The team switches positions after 10 minutes, with Bakira and Khan standing behind Kinigami in the striker position. Isagi notices that the enemy team is playing only defensively and Okawa isn't even running. As Nico gets the ball, Okawa starts running and Isagi realizes what is going on. With everyone in Team Z pulled a bit forward, Nico shoots a long pass for Okawa, which leaves him alone against Lemon. As another 10 minutes pass, Team Z rotates again and Khan takes the striker position with Kinigami and Reichi behind him. While Kinigami wonders what to do, Nico steals the ball. Reichi orders the team to simply pass the ball to him, but they have trouble doing so. Reichi is upset at halftime because they spent the entire 10 minutes without the ball. The team is concerned that if they put too much pressure on the opposition, they might launch a counterattack, which would allow Okawa to score another goal. Chijiri advises them to concentrate on Bakira and Kinigami instead of wasting time on pointless techniques. The game remains the same as the second half begins, and Imamura is frustrated that they can't even get the ball. He presses up, and as a result, Gagamaru is able to steal the ball. Now that Imamura and Naruhaya are behind him, it's Gagamaru's turn to be the striker. Isagi must shoot an early cross into the area in front of the goalkeeper in order for the Gagamaru formation to work. Isagi believes that this is their first opportunity to score, but then he remembers his vision. As they send too many players into the opposing team's field, Khan begins to worry that if Okawa gets the ball now, the game will be lost. Isagi, on the other hand, deduced that the vision he had was related to Nico and moved forward to intercept the ball before it reached him. Isagi then receives the ball and sees an opportunity to score, but Nico blocks him. Isagi assures that they won't let Nico run around free once more and he will be contained as this is the best strategy to win. 
In the end, Nico tells Asagi that even though he has the same eyes as his, he will be unable to defeat him. That's it for today's recap. If you like to see more content like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.